Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. Okay, in this session, we're going to talk about how much stress reduction you really need in your foot to heal while you continue to run. The thing is, you have to think about this in a couple of ways. One of them is that you have to remember that the injury you have, any overtraining injury, is caused by too much stress applied to that structure. Once it starts to heal and you're trying to return to running, you have to keep the overall amount of stress applied to that structure low enough that it can continue to heal even while you ramp up your activity. So there's several ways to think about this. And you know, just remember, you're trying to heal that one injured part. You have one stress fracture, one plantar plate tear. You have one structure that's been damaged. Whatever it is, you've got to heal that one structure. But you can do that if you can reduce the amount of stress to it and you can still ramp up your activity. Now, there are lots of different ways to remove pressure. And you have to think about doing this in a graduated fashion as you continue to heal. There's a whole continuum of healing all the way from doing absolutely no activity, where the bone is really weak, where the structure is really weak, where the ligament's really weak, and then it starts to heal, get stronger and stronger, and it can take more and more activity, a little more stress at each stage of that activity. So let's talk just about the stages and ways that you can graduate that weight bearing and the stress applied to the structure. The first thing, the lowest amount of stress applied to a structure, of course, is complete non-weight bearing. That means you're in a wheelchair, you're on bed rest, or you're on crutches. You're not putting your foot on the ground at all. That's the lowest amount of stress. The second thing is using a fracture walking boot. So usually when you get off of crutches, you're protected in a fracture walking boot. That boot is holding you still, it's immobilizing everything. And even as you walk, because of the curvature on the bottom of the, the boot, it doesn't load the forefoot as much as when you're walking without the protection of the boot. And then you can do something else. You can actually add a pad in your shoe that takes the pressure and moves it somewhere other than that one injured bone. So if you take a metatarsal pad and you modify it and you put it underneath your insert in your shoe and it applies pressure to the neighboring metatarsal bones and takes stress away from the one injured metatarsal bone that has a stress fracture, you reduce that stress even more. But of course, you're applying even more stress to those neighboring metatarsals so it's a lot more reduction of stress to the one injured bone, but it's a lot of additional stress to the neighboring bones. And another way to modify it is to basically cut a hole in an insert in a running shoe where you're only removing like literally a couple of millimeters of material and thus just a tiny bit of pressure to that one injured metatarsal bone or the one plantar plate sprain or whatever's been injured in your foot. And if you take that one modified insert where you cut a hole in it, that is removing a little bit of the stress, but it's not removing as much stress as say a, a big bulky pad that really moves that pressure uh, sort of aggressively to the other structures around that one entered part. And then of course the last thing is no modification of any insert at all. That's just your normal pattern, right? Your normal foot strike, your normal biomechanics applying the same amount of stress that you had when you got the injury. So somewhere along that continuum is what's right for you at every stage of the continuum of healing throughout your recovery. So you have to remember, this is the trick with it, is that you're trying to remove enough pressure from that one injured part to heal that injured part, but not so much pressure that you damage some other part. That's why you wanna do this in a graduated fashion. When the bone's at its weakest, you want to stabilize it and protect it the most with crutches or a fracture walking boot. As soon as you feel like it starts to heal, then you want to basically increase the amount of pressure applied to that bone and decrease some of the the stress and the pressure that's put on the neighboring structures. So you're basically gonna go in most cases from strict non-weight bearing, we're using crutches to graduated or protected weight bearing in a fracture walking boot. And then you go from there to uh, modifying your insert by adding a pad that takes pressure specifically off that one injured structure, but puts a lot of stress on the neighboring metatarsals. It's okay to walk in an insert like that, but you don't really want to run in it. You know, it's okay to cycle in it because that's non-impact, but you don't want to just take a big pad, put it in there to take all the pressure off one injured structure and apply it to everything around that structure because it might be too much stress. You might end up with a different metatarsal stress fracture or something. So then when you transition to running, you can remove the pad and then do something even simpler to um, remove the stress from that one structure, like modifying a shoe insert by just cutting a hole in it and putting that insert under the insert in your running shoe. And then of course, when you're finally all healed and you're all better, you just remove all those modifications so you're back to your normal running, but you don't wanna do that until you're fully healed and you're really ready to run and train without restraint. 
So just remember, you got to do it in a graduated fashion, but the goal is to actually increase the amount of stress applied to that healing structure right at the time it's able to take it. So you just have to monitor that. You have to check it. You have to keep increasing the stress. But remember, you have to keep moving while you keep healing. That's the key to getting back to running as quickly as possible. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.